Don't forget to drink water, everybody. I'm getting over something. I don't know what it was or whatever. It wasn't COVID or anything, but I'm getting over something. And today is like the first day I feel, I would say, adequate enough to record a video. So I do apologize if I seem a little off or something like that. So just bear with me. But I did do some research or wherever over like a week or two of the last video, I would say I talked about audio mixers and I wanted to kind of go ahead and clarify some things. And I wanted to go ahead and give some actual recommendations that I found that I think would be um, worth to talk about and worth to, re again, recommend to some people that are out there looking for an audio, I would say, solution for routing their audio, whether they're a streamer or a content creator is doing multifaceted types of content who is looking to be able to um, smoothly control their audio versus um, what they hear versus what the stream hears, stuff like that and be able to sit down and you know and record videos and stuff like that and like i said do different things than not just sitting at their actual stream desk so with that being said let's go ahead and talk about it first off i want to go ahead and say yes i use the wavelink software and stuff like that from elgato i've mentioned it multiple times but at this point i feel like I've outlived and outgrown what is capable with the software. And not only that, my frustrations with the fact of the software is still janky after years of using it and it doesn't seem like it's getting any better. Um, and on top of that, the whole how much you have to pay to get control over a device and software that you already paid to have access to or to have or wherever it's like we're being nickel and dimed i almost feel like i'm paying microtransactions in order to get more access and more control over a video game that i already paid for it's kind of like that scenario or like i go to a uh, burger joint like mcdonald's and i order you know a burger some nuggets and some fries and it's like i have to pay for everything literally everything that goes on the burger every single chicken nugget individually and every fries individually in order just to have my meal instead of just paying one, I would say, uh, cost or whatever for the whole entire meal. And it's just weird to me because like you got to get the Stream Deck Plus in order to get the knobs and control the audio mixtures and stuff like that. Like you should already be able to and it should be on one device because we see it with more expensive devices like the Rodecaster Pro 2 and all those Go XLR and stuff like that. You see that you only have one device, even though it might be somewhat of a bigger device, you have one device that allows you to control all the volumes and, and everything wherever on that device and the software is running on that device. So it's less resources on your PC. But with Elgato, you have to get the stream deck and you have to get one of the wave platforms or wherever, whether it be the wave one, wave two, or I mean, the wave one, wave three, or the wave XLR. And on top of that, you have to get the Stream Deck Plus in order to get the, the actual knobs and click in and change between what you're hearing and your stream is hearing. And then you have to get like an actual Stream Deck as well, because those eight buttons or wherever that's on the Stream Deck Plus is not going to be enough or wherever, regardless if everybody says infinite folders and all that stuff. Look, realistically, as somebody who's had the 15 button, uh, I would say Stream Deck and has the 32 button one and, and had both of them for a while or wherever and still uses the 15 over here on this desk to control everything. And then when I go to my Stream Desk or wherever I have the 32 button one and use it, I would recommend only getting the 32 button one and that's it because that's the only biggest one that I know out there that's on the market, at least right now, that allows you to have that many buttons to control in an infinite folder or wherever soon as another company comes out with something better or whatever or even more buttons than that or at least somewhat on par with that many buttons on one device then i probably will switch over or whatever as long as it allows me to control my obs stuff or whatever that, that's all i really care about but i'm telling you right now again as somebody who does multi-faceted multi-variety of content don't get it don't believe the hype don't fall into this thing or wherever of you know 200 for this device 150 dollars for this device and then 100 dollars for this device and then 150 dollars for this device and now you're sitting here and you paid 500 to 700 dollars just to get access or get some semblance of control over a software system that you should all have in one device because again we know it's possible we've seen it with the goal xlr we've seen it with um the podcasting uh setups or wherever with road and the podcast uh i would say the roadcaster 2 and the roadcaster duo and all that stuff and some things from another company that i'm gonna mention on later in the video we've seen it possible you know with these other devices for i would say even probably at that point less than 
it would cost you to get all the stuff to get the Elgato, I would say, software to up and running and have control of it the way you should supposed to have. And another company I would say to I would say to avoid is going to be the Beacon company or whatever with the Beacon Mix Create and the Beacon Mic or wherever. Because at the end of the day, you have to get the Beacon Mic and the Beacon Mix Create. And the Beacon Mix Create is two hundred dollars. The microphone is like two seventy nine or wherever, almost three hundred dollars, which both are over overly priced and anytime you mention it to any of the youtubers or the influencers that cover those products they always mention like you know maybe you should save your money or or maybe it's not really that expensive as you think it is and it's all this stuff or whatever because they want you to purchase the microphone because they're they're given the products for free they ain't pay 500 to almost uh almost $500 where for that setup, you know what I'm saying? Like they have no idea what they're talking about. And again, they're just trying to stay and play nice where with the company because the company is the old company that did the XLR. So if they come out with any more devices, they want to be able to be in the loop and still cover products because they realize this is the hotness. I need access to these products to get access to the views, to get access to get paid on the videos. So you got to be very, very careful when you're looking at these people and they're covering products and they're telling you what to get. You just got to avoid. So, and not to mention the drama that did happen with Epo's box and stuff like that, but all that stuff aside, just me objectively looking at what I'm trying to do and what I think streamers and content creators are going to need and what they're going to try to do getting locked down to one microphone only or wherever. And the point of failure of that microphone messes up. It's not like you can just go and get another microphone. Even if you have a warranty and stuff like that, you still would have to get an actual another microphone. Whereas if I just don't like the way my microphone looks anymore, or I want to change, you know, the color of my microphone, or maybe I want a different type between a dynamic mic and I feel more like a condenser mic today, I can do that and switch it up or whatever and just plug, you know, an XLR cable into it and I'd be good. With that, you're just gonna be stuck with that. It's only a white and black option that's it no variety in, in anything other than maybe getting a custom wim foam or whatever to go on top of it now i've seen more customized beacon mics or wherever people having or wherever with these designs on it and all this stuff these special editions or wherever from the company and it's guess what just the influencers that you know did the microphone when it first came out <laughs> wonder what's going on there you know what i'm saying so again i would just avoid like i said just elgato and the beacon or wherever it's, just avoid those two companies like i said and even when i understand even to this day the beacon mic and the beacon mix create the software is still having its jankiness and issues even though they've you know improved on it obviously since it's been out but from what i understand there's still problems that are plaguing that so again i would just completely avoid it avoid the whole wavelength software uh ecosystem because you're just paying and nickeling and diming or whatever to get control over what you can get control over with the device I'm gonna talk about now, which is the Avermedia Gamer Nexus. That's the actual device that I would recommend for newer content creators and streamers or wherever, mostly streamers who are getting into the space who are looking to be able to control individual submixes from one device, have somewhat stream deck button or whatever capabilities like to control what happening on their stream, like switching scenes and stuff like that. And on top of that, having dedicated knobs at the bottom or wherever to be able to control that stuff, having a touch screen that has five different screens that you can read chat and stuff from. And I know a lot of people are going to immediately jump in the comments and be like, this device was like 350 when it first came out. And now it's sitting at like 300. And on top of that, it came out in 2021. It's an old device or wherever. And the software was janky when it first came out. Haha, my friend, the last video that I've seen or wherever it was like five months ago. And from what I've seen and what the person talked about, the software is actually in a better spot. It's actually received a lot of robust, I would say, updates and is still being updated from what I've seen or wherever. The last update was like late in 2023 or mid 2023. And they're still, you know, working on the actual uh, software that come, I would say, coincides uh, with the actual Avermedia Nexus. And on top of that, they released capture cards at the beginning of this year. So I do think if they do release a 2.0 sometime this year or next year, there is going to be a capture card possibly present on that newer device, which obviously would make it, I would say, more um, intuitive of what we're seeing nowadays with devices that are coming out that are similar. However, there is no device out there that I have seen just yet that has the capability from its own like one device that has the stream deck capability as far as controlling certain things having a touch screen I would say stream deck 
controls or wherever on that touch screen or wherever for five different screens, having the capability to switch between what you're hearing and what your stream is hearing and then control it on the knobs that are actually present on the actual device itself. And then on top of that, having some um, micro pads on the side or wherever. This combination of a device, I don't know why Elgato hasn't made something like this or any other company has made something like this. And it's because they want to charge you for so many different individual devices, even at the price of 300 or wherever, it's still more than what you uh, still less, sorry, than what you would pay for as far as getting into the Elgato system and buying one from each category in order, like I said, to get full functionality control over the Wavelink software, or even the Beacon Mix Create microphone and their own audio mixer. So again, yes, you would still have to possibly find ways to, you know, EQ your microphone a little bit or something like that. I do think there's options wherever within the actual software on the actual gamer ne nexus or wherever. And again, it's not going to be Elgato level of, uh, you know, stability and stuff like that. Cause uh, from what I understand, Avermedia has always kind of had a little bit of jankiness and being behind the times with, uh, in comparison to Elgato software, but even in Elgato software case or wherever, even if if you polish up that turd a polished turd is still a turd so uh, it's it's depending on what you want to deal with or wherever but in my personal opinion for streamers who want to all the one device or wherever and maybe get something uh, on the side as a companion or wherever i would say the 32 button uh stream deck from elgato unless you can deal with um maybe a third party device or something like that has micro uh, pad capabilities that you can you know assign hot keys to and stuff like that um, but as far as i know there's none out there that's like as big as the elgato one with 32 buttons um but if you do know let me know in the comments because i want to get rid of my 32 button one but um yeah, I would say the 32 button one, and that's the only thing I would purchase, like I said, from Elgato and then having the Avermedia Gamer Nexus or wherever, and you'll be good to go as a streamer. I think it will last you for a while, especially um, since, you know, it does have the, I would say capability more so for older consoles. And it, like I said, it doesn't have a capture card uh, built into it or wherever, but I would say for the average streamer who is, you know, somewhat on a budget, and I know $300 doesn't seem like on a budget, but in the grand scheme of things, not buying all those individual products that lead up to that price and just buying one or wherever that's going to you know be good for you or whatever just up front and saving up to get that that's going to be better than like i said any of these other options or wherever for you in my personal opinion based on the research that i've done um another one is going to be from i would say road the road streamer x some people might bring up because like i said the avermedia one doesn't have a capture card but that one does but you lose out on a lot of functionality and it's kind of weird because Rode has done the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Duo and all that stuff. But when they came over to do the Streamer X, it's like they forgot that streamers are going to need the same things as podcasters and stuff as far as like faders and knobs to control volumes and access to sub mixes and stuff. It's just weird. So you lose all that, but you get you gain a capture card. Um, so it's just a $300 paperweight. I don't understand why companies keep doing this, especially even Elgato. They come out with these devices that don't even let streamers be able to be streamers streamers again need to be able to control what they're hearing versus what the stream is hearing they need the knobs and the faders wherever to do that or wherever it's nice to have a small form factor device yes but they still need that capability and with the road not having like yeah you can have colors on the little touch pads but you don't know what those touch pads do unless you have a really good memory or whatever of what color does what or wherever and the navigation arrows and stuff. And it's just like, all you have is two knobs, one for volume and one for your microphone uh, volume or whatever, that's it. You don't have any easy way to control sub mixes between, like I said, turning down music for you or muting the music for you and not muting it for your stream or whoever's listening. Um, or turning down discord or something really easy and stuff this stuff is supposed to uh alleviate the pains of alt tabbing out of a video game and going to find this uh, the software or wherever to you know mitigate the volume or mute or whatever pause music all that stuff that's what these devices are supposed to do it's supposed to ease the pain of having to do that just being able to pick up the device or wherever or just slide it down hit a button or wherever and that's it these devices, even these, uh, I would say cheap ones, like from Fine Find SC3 or wherever, this is the stuff that I talked about. These devices are not made for streamers. I'm sorry, the Rode Streamer X is not made for streamers. Yes, it has a capture card built in. Yes, you can plug microphones into and everything like that, but that's not what a streamer needs. Stop putting stuff 
that you're saying that it's for streamers, for gamers, all this stuff, and not actually giving us what we need. It's like they never gave get, got any input from anybody who was actually a streamer. And I'm like, yeah, I don't even have millions of views when I stream. I don't have like a lot of people watching me, but I can tell you right now, half these devices that come out, even from these big companies, like I said, Rode, who came out with the Rodecaster and Rodecaster Pro 2 and the, and the Rodecaster Duo, it's like, again, they don't, they act like they don't know what people need. It's so weird to me. So yeah, I would completely avoid the Rode Streamer X. The only one I would recommend against just four streamers who are just gonna sit there and stream and that's it. I would re recommend the Avermedia Nexus still, and if, especially if they come out with a 2.0 version that's using the same software and now updating it to have a capture card in it, definitely I think that's gonna be the device to buy. Now, for people who are going to be a, I would say, variety, uh, multifunctional, multi, uh, I would say, faceted content creator who is not only streaming, but doing content, like I said, like I do um, with multiple different microphone inputs and stuff like that, because most of these devices only allow one XLR input or something like that, or maybe even having a combo jack so you can try different types of microphones or wherever, but still having that port. Um, I would recommend the DLZ or Mackie DLZ Creator XS. They do have a Maxi, Maxi uh, DLZ Creator, but that's a big, big one. It's even bigger, I think, than the Rodecaster uh, Pro 2, if I remember correctly. So obviously the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the DLC Creator is going to take up more of a footprint on your desk. That's why I recommend the XS because it's smaller. Um, and on top of that, the reason why I recommend it over the Rode products is because they have a actual setup wizard within the device itself and all the software is being run on the device. So that's even a plus over a lot of these devices that I told you to avoid. And over the, I would admittedly over the Avermedia Nexus is that you're not going to really have to have software running on your PC. Now, this device does come with companion software that's supposed to be, you know, released later on, but it's coming from audio companies. So we're just going on a limb and saying, hopefully the software will be good. But again, you know, take that with a grain of salt, you know, watch and make sure you make an informed decision before you purchase if you do want to use that software that comes with it. But it's not needed because, again, the device is pretty much like a little mini computer itself. And like I said, it has a companion wizard in there that's going to help you set up. So if you're a brand new content creator, uh, somebody who's like intermediate or wherever or expert as far as running audio devices like the device itself, it will show you what you need to do as far as setting things up, giving you access to certain things or wherever so you can do it yourself and fine tune it yourself or you can let the device do it for you for you or whatever. This is the device that I said, like multiple different microphone inputs, 3.5 microphone inputs as well. The only thing it doesn't really have is like a capture card because again, it's more towards, I would say, podcasty or recording kind of thing or wherever. Obviously, you can use it for live streaming, even if you're live streaming a podcast or wherever. Um, but for gamer streamers or wherever, this thing is not necessarily for that. And that's why I think some people probably shouldn't get this device and probably should avoid even like the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Duo and all that stuff, even though I get all told all the time people in the comment section they have the device or wherever but nine times out of ten those people are just like just gaming and that's it they're not using the device to its full capability you're using like 30 to 40 percent of it even though people say you know it's the best device best decision or wherever they still kind of wasted 500 to 700 dollars because they're again they're not getting the full capability out of it but at the same time if you're already looking for something like I said, that's going to let you be a multifaceted, multi-variety content creator. Then, and on top of that, you're looking at the Goal XLR and you're like, man, I really wish I could have got it. This is going to be the device I recommend or wherever, because again, it has that companion app uh, thing or wherever, setup wizard to help you set it up and everything. And on top of that, it's going to have a smaller form factor than even the Rodecaster Duo. And I still recommend the Rodecaster Duo if you don't, if you don't mind it being a little bit bigger, because it does have that vase amount on the bottom. Um, but it doesn't have the companion app and stuff like that. And I will leave a video linked in the description um, to a guy who covers both of the differences where we're between the two devices. And to me, that's the only reason why the DLZ creator actually really, uh, I would say, edges out over the Rodecaster uh, Duo is because for one, it's smaller. Yes, you do lose out on faders, but you do have the knob still, but um, it loses out again because it has a smaller form factor. And on top of that, it has that setup wizard from which I can glean from multiple YouTube channels and multiple sources and stuff 
is actually going to be, uh, I would say, very uh, helpful and conducive to people who are looking to, like I say, get into content creation and who are looking to be able to route their audio, have control over microphone settings and, and VSTs and plugins and stuff like that and adjusting things and everything. I think that's going to be the best. And like I said, they do come with software um, that's going to be a companion app or on the PC if you do want to run that. But more often than not, like I said, you can run all that stuff just you know purely on the actual device itself so it's not taking up resources on your computer like with the road companion app or wherever the the unity or wherever it's called or wherever um even with the streamer x you still don't have control of those individual submixes so you still have to go and control them and like i said the avro media yeah it's gonna have to run on your pc so it's still taking up resources but you still at least get to control it from the actual device itself you know what i'm saying so and that's why I would recommend these devices or wherever. There's probably tons of other audio devices out there that I forgot to mention or wherever. But, you know, these are the ones that, like I said, that I feel like it was worth mentioning. And on top of that, I feel like you kind of get the, the point across or wherever within the video is that if you're going to be a streamer or a content creator or wherever in 2024 going forward, the companies need to start realizing that people need physical devices to be able to control what they're hearing versus the video i would say that's being outputted uh whether that be through a live stream or an actual like youtube video or a video on any other platform if i want the music to be higher for you guys watching and i want it lower for me if i'm listening to music at the same time I need to be able to have a physical device, even if it's software that's running on my computer, I need to have a physical device that's going to control that, not just the overall volume output of it. And like I said, in Elgato's case, paying that much money in order to just have the capability or control over something that I already paid money for is, it's just kind of ridiculous at this point. And I don't understand why nobody points it out. I do actually understand why they do, but you're probably going to see it in the comment section below where people just automatically just jump to defend Elgato. Um, but like I said, it's just kind of just absurd to me that we're at this point and nobody has done it yet. Like they've done with the, the goal XLR or nobody like really listens to streamers and be like, Hmm, streamers want individual submixes. Okay, let's put that into the software. Okay, they want hardware control. They they want physical dials and, and 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 knobs and stuff. Okay, let's give them physical dials and knobs. They can't control what they hear versus what their stream hears. But we gave them physical. <sighs> I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of the second camera angle down in the comment section. Trying out something new here. Yeah. What was the point of this video? <laughs>